the tranquility of Camp Trapping. It seems like it's a million miles away from the mean streets of Canada's towns and cities. In fact, it is isolated, tucked away in the rolling mountains of north central British Columbia. But all this peace and quiet is deceiving. It doesn't look like it, but this is a tough place. It is tough. Not like in jail, you just sit in a cell and just rot. <gasps> you know, you're actually doing something, improving yourself. You have to earn everything that you, that you get here. It's kind of the same way in life. It's got like more of a punishing uh, aspect to it. But at the same time, you know, it's a lot like a friendlier atmosphere than jail. Day one for new recruits at Camp Trapping. After a 45 minute drive south of Prince George, they joined seven other kids known as vets already halfway through the four month program. And your running shoes, don't forget those. The overlap is deliberate. The veterans are supposed to be big brothers to the rookies. Some come from juvenile jail, others straight from court. On average, each have eight offenses under their young belts, crimes like B&Es and violating probation. Oh, is it ever quiet in here? All are considered potentially violent. Let's try me Do you have tobacco? Oh, you know, you know the smoke? Yeah. Mm. Well, when I first seen like a few guys, I was like, oh man, I'm gonna, you know, just stay clear away with them. And I just basically kept it like I normally do when I was in jail and stuff, just kept my mouth shut, you know. You keep your mouth shut, you don't get beat up. And uh, after a while, I got talking to a few guys, you know, it was okay. I think the most important factor that we look at or need to look at is, is the individual ready to make some changes in their life? Daryl Gall uh, is Camp Trapping's uh, executive director. Uh, perhaps they've brushed up against the judicial system and have decided that uh, they don't want to go to jail that uh, they do want to uh, get their lives back on track, uh, then we can uh, be successful with that student. Yes, good day. Welcome. I got some size. I like that. We're going to be loading lots of wood. Uh, nice indeed. That's cool. Brenda, let you know what you're up to? Yeah. Getting ready for sauna? Yeah. I'll be taking you guys down in about how long is it going to take you well, guys to get ready? Great. Bring me some shorts. So we'll like oh, right on. Cool. Video, right? Great. We got lots of time. And I'll get myself ready. The first order of business for all new recruits, de-lousing. Head, pits, and groin, that's all we need to do. Then you can use your own shampoo. It's a necessity because one infested kid can affect the whole camp. There are no hot showers here, just a wood-fired sauna. And to rinse the local ice-cold lake. Holy cow. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think they froze. <laughs> Water temperature just above freezing. Air temperature yeah, zero. <laughs> you know how to do it quick, huh? No, do I ever. Everything the kids are required to do, the staff do too. Actually, it wasn't too bad because I was no, hot enough in the sun. The staff here aren't jailers, they're counselors. And the kids aren't called prisoners, they're students. They're required to attend school, woodworking classes, and wilderness survival courses. Tim Armstrong has been a counselor here for three and a half years. I mean what I say. I'm willing to be honest, and I'm not scared to cry. And if uh, these guys are modeling after the image of the American gangsta guy, a very emotional person who's supposed to be a jail guard can fool them. All the counselors, they, they're not like, they don't treat you like crap or nothing. They actually say stuff to you and treat you like human beings, not like jail guards. And if you got, are caught smoking out of bounds, it's going to be AWOL. And the counselors may be caring and kind, but they're also tough. Make no mistake, this is a detention facility. It may not be a scream-in-your-face boot camp, but it's run with military-like precision. There are rules, and there are more rules. And then there are rules about the rules. So grab a plate, grab a plate. Don't, don't eat, don't you sit down, and don't take anything you don't want to eat. And chores are over here. So if you're designated a kitchen chore, um, these charts have everything that is required of that chore. You guys, I know your head probably hurts by now. You know, it's a tremendous amount of stuff to remember all at once. It's impossible to remember that to ask questions, you know, and cover your butt. Everybody starts even with 84 points. And there are good reasons to cover your butt. 
Life here revolves around a point system. The more points you earn, the easier your life. If you rebel, you fail to earn what few privileges there are, and you only have yourself to blame. I can perform something, but if my conduct is foul while I'm doing it, I can perform anything, but while I'm throwing things, you know, along the way, I've got to work, I've got to work on my behavior. So I might fail to earn either one of these points. You flip it up and see how this kind of dangles down? You slip it underneath. And we are really picky about that, guys. We want to see these angles. You know, we don't have a big line or an electric fence or anything like that. That just shows you know what the boundaries are. If you do screw up, things can get even tougher fast. If you rebel, if you get into a fight, if you're caught with contraband, you end up at a bare-bones campsite a couple of kilometers deeper into the woods. It's known as the alternate. Here you chop wood 12 hours a day, eat plain macaroni, and go one-on-one -on -one with a counselor. Of course, you can always try to escape. We can either choose to return you to the program once the police pick you up, and at that point, that is very iffy. And if we do, then it's written in stone that you'll come to the alternate as a means of earning the privilege of going back to camp. Fuck you! That's 30. 30. For more minor yeah, offenses like swearing, the penalties are simple but effective. Twenty. Twenty-one. Four more pieces. If you steal or damage something, payback time comes at the wood pile. Sawing, chopping, and stacking wood. Mountains of it. Firewood is the currency of consequence. One piece equals six cents of debt. And if you mouth off, you can be out in the cold. Just pick it up. Well, what did I do? Pick it up. Remember, your comments are not appreciated at the dinner table. What pick comments? Your, pick your... Pick it up. There's just one comment. Pick it up and leave the room, please. I, I want to know why I'm getting kicked okay. out. Okay. Now wasn't the time to ask. Move no, it, please. Oh, what a crock. <laughs> the program, the perks, and the penalties are built out of the study of child psychology and cold, hard experience. When it was established 23 years ago, camp trapping was closer to the boot camp model so much in favor today. But it evolved to this, a complicated combination of tough love and a tough outdoor life. I believe in the model. I've, uh, I've seen it affect change in young people's lives. Camp director Daryl Gall. Getting tough is what kids need nowadays, but it can be delivered in a very empathetic manner that uh, we do have a very rules and regulated program. It does work, but we deliver it uh, in the best interests of the child. All's room, hell the door. At the end of an overwhelming day, the rookies perform the last of their new chores. This will be their life for the next four months. They've traded stealing cars for sweeping floors, and cleaning out houses for cleaning out houses. Responsibilities, actions, consequences. Right now, you just got to give that, this camp a chance and say, yeah, I can do it, you know, and forget about the past. You're here now. You have to worry about the present. For at least one new recruit, all the hard work has him longing for the easy life, back in regular jail. I'm just too lazy to, to bother go through it because I've been so accustomed to the jail. Because you, you don't do much. I mean, there's not much physical activity, just sit around and not do nothing all day. So, give it a, give the camp a chance. It's good. And you got a lot of people supporting you. Others buy in surprisingly quickly. It doesn't take long for most to get with the program. It's only been a day. Uh, I'm hoping I'll do good. It's like, you know, I'm hoping I'll get out in the four months and stuff. I got a good feeling about it. Lights are going off, guys. Good night. Sleep tight. But there are more challenges ahead that will try the resolve of both rookies and vets alike. When we come back, the greatest challenge of camp trapping. Do, do, do. 
Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, James, you're hiding from me. Come on. Time to rock and roll. Dixon. I'm not getting up. I'm not getting up. I don't like 25 kilometers. Two months into the program for the rookies, four months for the vets. Camp Trapping's tough physical program and its young inmates are about to be put to the test. Is it cold now? No, it's about zero and a little wind from the south. For weeks, oh, the students have been going on longer and longer runs. On this bone-chilling morning, everyone here, including counselors, will attempt a 25-kilometer marathon. It's become a Camp Trapping tradition. This is a very old motivational tool one uses. Loop. On grad night, they can get presented a medal if they make it in two hours and 30 minutes. So... Let's go the way of the van, folks. Get him. Get him. Oh! These are kids who a few months ago might have kept on running. They couldn't even obey simple court orders to attend school or stay away from a bad crowd or keep off drugs or booze. Now they've got the self-discipline to run a marathon. Counselor Tim Armstrong sets a blistering pace, but he's about to discover he's been left in the dust. Oh my. Oh, my chest time. 139. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah, baby. One of the kids oh, has come in with an chest. hour to spare. Oh, excellent, man. Oh, way to go. Oh, oh, oh. Woo. Student record. Yeah. You got it. Put my medals on right now. Kids and counselors alike finish the 25K on an emotional high. But an emotional low is just around the corner. Even this late in the program, there are screw-ups. An amazingly minor infraction can cause a crisis in this precisely regulated world. The group is about to slip up, quite literally, on a banana peel. This is an emergency session and uh, we got a banana peel that it needs explaining. There's a box of bananas in the root cellar, and there's a lonesome banana peel in there. And we need an explanation of what that's doing there. Has anybody uh, got any ideas? Chet. I'd like to say whoever took it, they should just own it up. Well, we're not going to spend any more time at this. What we're going to do is, uh, camp's going to go on shadow for 24 hours, which is, uh, oh. what time is it now? The building's be locked down and you can't even go to the outhouse without staff. Does everybody understand what that is now? I mean, uh... Somebody will have to give me a break. Well, we, we've discussed it and that's, that's, that's the decision that's coming. If you don't like it, well, that's appropriate because we know you guys aren't supposed to like this. Most in the group realize they're being shown how one person's selfish actions can affect an entire community whether that community is their camp or their hometown. But there's an event on the horizon that will soon cheer up even the most disappointed vet, graduation. And Counselor Tim wants to say goodbye in his own unique way. So here's feedback from me to you guys before we get all into what's going to happen. Jason, look at what you've done. You've said, I can't, can't for two months. And you've proven yourself wrong for the next two. Think of what you've accomplished and what you have ahead of you. Mike, everybody expressed their concerns to you in the, in the session about the abusive stuff. Don't do it, because we'll lose you. i got to keep trying, because I have an opportunity not to lose one kid, one kid to the streets. Because there's that many out there. There's lots dying every day. If I can get in on that and stop one, I win. It hurts a lot when you lose one. I don't want to keep you from your family, so get you got hugged. <laughs> Before the program, many of the kids lacked self-confidence and a sense of accomplishment. Graduation gives it to them in droves. Uh, he has shown that when he's enthusiastic about something, he's capable of achieving lots. The honors come well. fast and furious. So this award goes to Chet for um, the Untapped Potential Award. So yeah. Best sense of humor, Jason, go on up. Yeah. For the most expressive student who's let me know for four months what it is he needs, Mr. Cree, get up here, you.
It's just like this thing, inks, and I remember this. It's the first thing I ever got in my life. Thanks. This time round, all the kids complete the course. With graduation comes no guarantees. But of the 55 kids camp trapping can handle a year, less than half will get into trouble with the law after graduation. Compare that to juvenile jail, where up to 70% will reoffend. First thing you're going to do. Hibernate for a month! Camp director, Daryl Gall. I know how difficult it is for the students to stay on the straight and narrow. But inevitably, we have to let it go because the new group is coming in the next day and off we go again from square one. For Primetime News, I'm Eric Rankin at Camp Trapping near Prince George, B.C.